Hello lovelies, in this video we're going to be looking at our predictions for AQA, A-Level Psychology Paper 1, introductory topics in psychology. So in addition to our super popular biology, chemistry, maths predictive papers, we may have psychology and sociology papers for you as well. Just like all of our other subjects, Laura, my head of psychology, has looked into the trends and the patterns that have come up in the past. And then what she's done looking at all of the past paper questions is a really thorough analysis of the topics and the questions that have appeared in previous exam seasons and has used this to write psychology predictive papers for this year. If you follow the link in the description down below, then it'll take you through to where you can get all of the predictive papers or the video walkthroughs which are neatly sorted in a playlist for you. In addition to the papers, she's done video walkthroughs of all of the papers. So you can see what a top band answer looks like in psychology. These will also take you through the skills that you need to interpret the questions so you know how to structure your answer. And then over half term, she'll be running three live small group revision sessions with a focus on skills for paper three. Now for paper three, which is issues and opinions in psychology, there are questions on walkthroughs for all of the optional topics. We have not limited it just to a section or the most popular ones like some revision resources do. Whichever three topics you have prepared or you've been taught, there will be questions and support for you. The video walkthrough is over three hours long for this, so you can get an idea of how much detail we've got into making this for you. You will see questions in the same style as those in the exam, and then you'll be able to unpick what the examiners are actually asking what needs to be included in your responses, and how these should be structured. Then you'll be really ready to do exactly the same in the actual exam. Now, you can get all three papers that we've written for this year, all the video walkthroughs in our bootcamp or in our masterclasses, or you can use these topics that we're going to go over in this video as a starting point for your revision. But please, remember to prize absolutely everything. We are not examiners, we have not got any additional information, we have not got any insider information, we have not seen the real exams. So please revise everything, and this can be your starting point for your revision if you've left it a bit late to start and you don't know how to get going. And now we know for paper one, which is introductory topics in psychology, there are four sections in this paper. We're going to go through each of these topics in this video. You can use the timestamps in the description to jump to the section you're interested in, or you can just sit back and listen to the whole thing. Starting with social influence, we would like you to look at understanding the types of conformity. Familiarise yourself with the three main types of conformity, so internalisation, identification and compliance. Be prepared to provide examples of each and understand the underlying processes involved in each type of conformity, how they manifest in different social contexts, and practice applying these concepts to real life scenarios to deepen your understanding and aid in effective exam preparation. We'd like you to look at conformity to social roles and Zimbardo's prison experiment. Focus on understanding Zimbardo's Stanford prison experiment as a controlled observation rather than an experiment, despite the name. There was no independent variable here, and Zimbardo himself was a participant. Know the aim, procedure, findings, and conclusion study and be able to specifically link these conformity to social roles. Additionally, be prepared to critically evaluate the research by discussing its strengths, limitations, and supporting and contradictory evidence and alternative explanations to this. We'd like you to look at explaining social training through social influence process. So use your knowledge of conformity, obedience, and minority influence processes to explain social changes that have occurred. Prepare real-life examples where you've applied psychological research to understand the social change. And when discussing these examples, be sure to evaluate the effectiveness of psychological explanations in explaining social change, considering their strengths, limitations and applicability to different contexts. Develop this critical understanding on social influence processes and their role in societal change will really strengthen your responses, demonstrating a deeper understanding of the topic. If we're thinking about memory, that section, we'd like you to be familiar with the four different types of long-term memory. So familiarise yourself with the three main types. So episodic, semantic and procedural memory. Be prepared to discuss whether these are distinct memory stores for each type and provide supporting evidence as well as contradictory evidence. Consider how research findings support or challenge the idea of separate memory source for each type of long-term memory. We'd like you to do explanations of forgetting. So understand the two main explanations of forgetting 
interference and retrieval failure. Interference encompassing proactive and retroactive interference, while retrieval failure includes the absence of clues to context-dependent forgetting and state-dependent forgetting. Be ready to evaluate both explanations by considering supporting evidence, contradictory evidence, and the ability to explain forgetting in real-life situations. Analyse how well each explanation accounts for everyday instances of forgetting and consider their strengths and limitations in different contexts. So if we're looking at attachment, we'd like you to look at Schaefer's stages of attachment. So familiarise yourself with Schaefer's four stages of attachment, asocial, indiscriminate, specific and multiple attachments, and the behaviours associated with each stage. Provide clear examples to distinguish between these stages and be prepared to evaluate the stage one model by discussing its strengths and limitations. Consider supporting evidence from Schaefer and Emerson's 1964 study which initially supported these stages. The strain situations and method of attachment type. So understanding Ainsworth's strain situation procedure and how it's used to measure attachment quality. And then the stages of the procedure and the behaviours it observed, including proximity seeking, explanation, stranger anxiety, separation anxiety and reunion responses. Be able to evaluate the measure by examining supporting contradictory evidence and considering its use as a measure of attachment, considering cultural variations. Effects of institutionalisation. I hate saying that word. Explore the impacts of institutionalisation on attachment. Draw from evidence such as studies like the Romanian Orphanage Study and understanding the effects of institutionalisation, including disinhibited attachment, delayed physical and intellectual development and antisocial behaviour. Be prepared to discuss the implications of institutionalisation on attachment formation and development, considering both short and long term consequences. And then the last section psychopathology. So, failure to function adequately, adequately definition of abnormality. So, familiarise yourself with the failure to function adequately definition of abnormality and understand its use in determining whether someone's behaviour and condition necessitate formal diagnosis and treatment. Be ready with examples illustrating situations where this definition might apply. Prepare to evaluate this definition by discussing its uses and appropriateness, as well as the associated limitations, and have examples ready to illustrate why this definition may not always be the best approach to defining abnormality. We'd like to look at characteristics of phobias. Divide the characteristics of phobias into three categories, behavioural, emotional and cognitive. Ensure clarity about which characteristics belong in which category, and you may encounter specific questions focusing on one type. Behavioural explanations of phobias. Remember that behavioural approach is used to explain phobias in this part of the exam, including classical conditioning to describe how phobias are acquired, and operant conditioning to describe how they are maintained. Be prepared to evaluate this explanation, considering its applicability to real-life situations and discussing supporting and contradictory evidence. All of this, all the papers, the walkthroughs and all the supporting data we have are just waiting for you over on the website. And don't forget, we are here with you every single step of the way. Ouch! This is why in some videos I explain scratches. Thank you.